Hi, Trent from Classic Rides Arizona. Today we're working on this 1952 GMC pickup and we're working on building this into a budget-friendly daily driver uh, with modern performance and, and safety and reliability but without breaking the bank and we're starting with a front disc brake upgrade from CPP. We're keeping the six lug bolt pattern to keep it simple and we're going to keep the drum brakes on the rear to keep the cost down and we wanted to just show you the steps along the way. Hope it will be helpful. The diagram on the instruction manual is pretty small and uh, doesn't include quite all the pieces. Uh, so we wanted to show you the step by step from what we learned along the way. So we've already removed the drum assembly. Um, so you just take the wheel bearing off, grind the rivets out, punch them out, pull the drum off. And then there's four bolts here that hold the backing plate to the spindle. So you remove those and then we cleaned off the spindle and now we're ready to start with reassembly. Before you get started or too carried away, certainly before you modify or paint anything, you will want to put the rotor with the caliper inside your wheel and just make sure that everything is going to clear. Next it's time to install the caliper bracket and as far as knowing which side is left or right, you can see there's this slight jog in the bracket. So the jog goes toward the inside and then this is the hole for the caliper that goes to the back. And so instead of the four mounting holes like the drums, this is just going to have three. And it'll go on just like so. CPP provides the hardware. And so these two short, smaller bolts are for the top two holes. And then there's two different size bolts for the bottom. So the long one goes in the back through the caliper bracket. And then this one goes just through the spindle and through the steering knuckle. We've got the caliper bracket loctited and torqued down, so this is going to be a great time to spin the spindle here, lock to lock, and make sure that none of the hardware in the back is going to hit any of your stock hardware before you move on. Next we installed the hub to the rotor and pressed the studs through, and one thing of note here is on this wheel spacer there's these three holes, and then they go through the hub, this piece in the middle here, and then there's threaded holes in the rotor. And they were a little bit too small on this middle piece on the hub. Um, the holes, the pre-drilled holes were a little bit too small and maybe a little bit off center from the holes here on the spacer. Uh, so we had to drill them out and open them up. Um, the hole should be 3 8 inch, but we went just a hair bigger. I think we used a 13, 30 seconds drill bit just to make sure we had adequate room and then we were able to sandwich them all together and then it's time to press the studs through so ideally you probably want to use a press on this um, but if you don't have a press or access to a press you can take the studs and start them through with a punch and then you can use your lug nuts to pull them through and what you can do is slide this all through your wheel and that way you have more le more leverage when you're tightening down the nuts to, to pull the studs through. So now we're ready for reassembly and we've got the spindle cleaned off. I'm just going to do a dry run so I don't get my hands covered in grease just yet. But you're going to want to grease the spindle. And then, like I said, the instructions that you have, the diagram's only that big. So it's kind of hard to see. So just wanted to show you in real time. So first you'll have your inner wheel bearing race and your seal and then your inner bearing and you'll of course want to pack this with grease first. They go together like so and slide on there. Next your rotor and hub assembly. And then your outer wheel bearing also packed with grease. Then you have your washer, your retaining nut, and then once you get this tightened on to spec, make sure you put your cotter pin through there, and then you'll have your cap. And what we found is the clearance was just a little bit too snug to get the cap in, so we actually carefully removed some material around the edge of this cap just using some sandpaper until we got it to fit and then we got it to pop right in place. 
Once you have your rotor and hub assembly installed and tightened down, it's time to install the caliper and pads. Um, so you'll need to make sure you got the caliper that'll have the bleeder screw up. And then it's a snug fit. It's a little bit of a trick. Um, but you want to start with the front and then you can just kind of wiggle it back and forth and eventually it'll drop into place like so then you just take your two caliper screws and feed them from the back and then the threads are on the caliper bracket just through the two pads tighten it down and you're ready to go and then it'll just be time to install your wheel and then you'll want to make sure everything spins freely again with it fully assembled uh, steer back and forth make sure you're not going to have any clearance issues and then you're ready to bleed the brakes and hit the road so thank you for watching we hope this video was helpful you can stay tuned to our channel on here or follow us on our social media pages and you can stay up to date on this project as well as our other projects